Research indicates buckthorn provides a winter host for soybean aphid. In the fall, buckthorn serves as shelter for soybean aphid eggs to overwinter. In addition, buckthorn also disrupts the balance of our natural world, pushing out desirable native understory plants, creating a dark, dense thicket. There are a lot of seeds, and you might think these berries are a good food source for birds, but the berries are actually a laxative for birds and are cathartic. Buckthorn starts as a small sprout, but before you know it, it's a half inch in diameter and two to three feet tall. In Minnesota, I've discovered buckthorn that's 10 inches in diameter and 35 feet tall and into the overstory canopy of a forest. Buckthorn is a well-known plant I think most of us know is not welcome in Minnesota. It's a shrub or small tree that was originally brought over by Europeans in the mid-1800s for landscaping purposes. But with the help of berry-eating birds, it's a plant that got away. And boy, did it get away. Today, buckthorn thrives in the wild, in the woods, fence rows, and farm shelter belts. Buckthorn seeds have been known to remain viable for over a decade. This plant is a survivor. It can even change the soil chemistry, making it less friendly for our native plants. And here is a great example of an understory where buckthorn has taken over and the natives can't compete. There are a couple of easy ways to identify common buckthorn. It gets its name because at the end of the twig, you see paired bud. It looks like a miniature buck hoof print. That's where you also will find a small thorn wedged between the terminal buds at the end of the twig. It's only about a quarter of an inch long, but those thorns make handling this plant annoying and sometimes dangerous. The buck print, the terminal buds and the thorn in the middle are the key identifying feature of this plant. Let's take a look at the leaves. They're glossy, simple, and oval, almost egg-shaped, and have serrated edges like a kitchen knife. Buckthorn grow opposite or sub-opposite on the twig and are some of the first leaves to appear in the spring and the last to hang on in the fall, giving them another competitive edge over our native plants. Buckthorn berries are dark purple, almost black, clustered along the stem at the leaf axle. Berries remain on the plant all winter long. While berries are only produced on female buckthorn, soybean aphid overwinters on both male and female plants. There are some native look-alikes. Cherry is one that's often confused with buckthorn. Here you can see the difference between a buckthorn twig and a cherry twig. No thorn at the end of the bud on a cherry, and it also has an alternate leaf arrangement. Buckthorn outer bark and leaves are similar to cherry and plum. So another way to confirm this is really buckthorn, orange sapwood in medium-sized stems can help distinguish it from our natives. So remember, the two key features for identifying common buckthorn are the hoof print-like buds at the twig ends and the short, sharp thorn. In our next episode, we'll be showing you buckthorn management techniques. Be sure to check it out.